Welcome to Ethom's B2B demo. This is Madhu, Head of Sales and Marketing at Ethom. If you are here for the first time, then I would love to give you a brief overview of Ethom. We are a deep tech revenue accelerator based in Singapore and have worked with 80 deep tech startups from C to Series B stages. Our portfolio startups have received GTM and scaling support from the likes of Enterprise Singapore, Cyberport Hong Kong, Microsoft, AWS, Oracle, Rackspace, Unisys, Rive, and many others. We run a zero BS revenue scaler program called Plugin US ASEAN with a sole focus on attracting enterprise pilots. During the program, Ethom and its startups work really hard to fine tune the GTM, acquire customers, strengthen the pipeline, and grow the MRR. Today, we would love to present 11 deep tech startups and get your support in scaling them. Since we are sector and geography agnostic, presenting startups are from various geographies and sectors such as BFSI, marketing, supply chain, sustainability, data analytics, and security. So are you excited to hear four minutes long video pitches and ask a few brutal questions? If you do not get a chance to ask questions after the pitch, then please put them in the chat section and the founders will reply them shortly. If you want to do a deep dive or explore investment of pilot opportunities, then please schedule a separate call with respect to founders. We also have a jury with a strong investment background. They are going to score startups on various aspects and share their feedback at the end of the event. Hope you have favorite drinks with you. And you are ready to hear 11 innovations from our experienced and super energetic founders. Without further delay, I'll request Pankaj to take the event forward with our jury members' introduction. Once again, thanks a lot for joining us today. And I think this is how you do the welcome after five hours. Thanks to Madhu for this energetic start. Now it's time for our esteemed jury to introduce themselves. I would request our jury to do a 30 seconds brief introduction and I'll go uh, one after another. Probably I'll start with Brian. Brian, please unmute yourself. Hi everyone, I'm Brian. I'm a venture partner at BU Venture Partners. We're a global industry agnostic venture capital fund. Uh, we'll invest in pre-seed growth stages. Uh, happy to be here and thanks for having me. Thanks a lot, Brian. Akit. Please unmute yourself. Hey everyone. Thank you, Kaj. Thank you, team at Tom, for having me here. I am the co-founder and partner at Preflow Ventures. Uh, we are a sector agnostic early stage investment firm uh, with our functions in venture building and venture studios, supporting around 287 global startups as they speak. Thank you. Adam. Hey everyone, nice to be here. I'm really excited to learn more about your startups. I'm a venture team lead with uh, New Chip Accelerator. So I handle a lot of our admissions side and we are industry agnostic, uh, completely global as well. And uh, we work usually in the pre-seed to series A stage. Thank you. Sean? Yeah, hello everyone. Uh, this is Sam. I'm a founder uh, of uh, Star Guide Ventures. Based in Prague, we are focused in the Central and Eastern European uh, early stage startups. Happy to be here. Thank you, sir. Santiago. Hello, everyone. I'm Santiago. I am an investment associate at Crealo. Crealo is a corporate VC of Credit Corp. Credit Corp is the leading financial group in Peru. We invest in fintech startups in LATAM. Glad to be here. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Uh, do we have any case? Yeah, that's me. Hey, hi everyone. I'm Aniket. Uh, I'm currently based in Bangalore. I'm a part of the investment uh, team at Nexus Venture Partners. Uh, we are a $2 billion uh, early stage venture fund uh, and we are sector agnostic. Uh, we invest in technology first global companies and, and yeah, geography agnostic as well. Uh, typically coming in at seed or series A stages of the company. Uh, good, good to be here and, and see you all. Thanks a lot, Aniket. Uh, Raj, do we have Raj? Yes. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Rod. I'm a founder and uh, co-founder and partner at Living on the Edge Venture Capital firm based in Mexico, North Mexico. And we focus mainly in 
uh, prop tech, fintech, and retail, or anything to do with retail. It could be e-com and, and all the grays between the three sectors. And we mainly focus on Latin American founders, regardless where the startup is operating. And uh, I think I'm missing something. Yeah. Uh, not Well, our stages, yeah. Uh, Pre-seed and seed. That's that's our main focus. So thanks, everybody. Thanks and I'm excited. Thanks a lot, Rod. Did I miss anybody? Any other zero? Yeah, this is Gary. Hi, Gary. Yeah, my name is Gary Fowler. I'm a serial entrepreneur and investor. I've been involved in 17 startups and several unicorns. I was on the original management team at Click Software, sold to Salesforce for $1.35 billion, and also EBITDA.ai, an AI HR tech company. I'm the CEO and founder of GSD, Get You Done Venture Studios. We're an AI and quantum venture studio located in Silicon Valley. We have 121 companies in our portfolio representing 52 countries. We believe that intellectual capacity is evenly spread, but opportunities aren't. We have uh, our companies have raised from, from 250,000 to $30 million. We love AI, quantum, and the metaverse. Thanks. Fantastic. Thanks to Ajuri for being part of the event. I'm sure we will see some really interesting questions today from the, from the jury. Jurors, please don't forget to score startups after that pitch. We will also see your final take on the, uh, at the end of the pitches. Also, please use the jury suffix with your name so that audience can identify you easily. Before diving into we the pitches, just... I would love to share some housekeeping rules. Keep yourself muted throughout the presentations. Unmute yourself when you are requested to do so. Please use the chat section for Q&A only. Don't spam it. If you are a service provider and want to share some uh, share a bit more about your work, then we will give you 10 minutes in the end to promote yourself. But please keep the chat section completely clean. Okay? Raise your hands if you have questions. Now, it's time for our first startup to present. It is called Argen. It is a Brazilian startup using generative AI to bring crazy efficiency in architectural project planning space. And there we go. Hello, my name is Thomas Takeuchi, co-founder at Archigen, a Brazilian startup with the ambition to remodel the way we create architectural projects. What if we could generate design options in just a few seconds? With only two years of existence, we already managed to accomplish some promising results. Compared to last year, we had a 169 quarter-over-quarter quarter growth with $188,000 in deals closed only in the second half of 2022. If you have worked with architects to design your home, let's say, you must know it takes weeks or sometimes even months to finish a single design option. Why does it take so long? Well, the truth is that doing architecture is just hard. It has an extremely length work pipeline. You have to understand the client's problem, sketch a lot of possibilities, express the concept in a way the client can understand, and if everything goes well, you still have to create all the technical drawings. Archigen simplifies this tedious and expensive process. We have built an AI-powered generative design solution that conceives architectural design options in just a few seconds. The AI understands the client's problems and associates specific architectural constraints to solve it. All the criteria used are scored and plotted on an easy-to-understand dashboard to help choose the right design option. This is a preview of our solution, where you can import an existing building, set the architectural program, and navigate through many design options. You can also export the one you like the most to your Bean software of preference, and have all the 3D model, materials, and technical drawings completed automatically for you. As benchmark so far, we have reduced our client time to generate architectural layouts from weeks to seconds, with more than 10 valid options instead of just one delivered by traditional architectural services. Over a year period, this represents a cost reduction up to $8 million. For now, Archigen targets business with high demand for architectural service. They have an aggressive expansion plan or they need to update the design of existing buildings. With that in mind, we see most opportunities in the real estate, data center, retail, and bank sectors. Our business model is a customizable software as a service. We charge a setup fee of $100,000, a license per user per month of $350, and an optional premium support service. 
As a brief history of Arcgen, in April 2021, we deployed our first production software to the largest bank in Brazil. Since then, we have been successful in retaining and upselling them. In July of the same year, we did our first proof of concept for a real estate company, proving that our solution works on different scales of projects. One of our go-to-market strategies is through system integration. We have partnered with the major construction software companies such as Autodesk, MacNeil and Trimble, making our software able to communicate with theirs. This allows us to have access to their leads and have their credibility during the sales process. Archigen has also partnered with architectural software implementation companies, having them recommend our solution to their clients. The global architectural services market size was estimated in $351 billion in 2022. What distinguishes Archigen from the competitors is our adaptability. Our solution works on many scales and is highly adaptable to different business domains and architectural constraints. The only reason we could achieve this much is because of our team. Alex and I, even though learning how to code early on in our careers, come from an architectural background. Alex has his master's degree in parametric design at Architecture Association London. My master is in big data for urban design at Mackenzie University, Sao Paulo. Our CTO, John, is a software engineer with a master's degree in AI. We are currently fundraising $1 million to achieve a $4 million ARR and technological scalability. Thank you for your time. Okay, do we have questions for Arsene? Pankaj, can I, can I quickly go ahead? Yeah. Yeah. Hi, uh, Timagan, who was it that was pitching? Yep, Thomas, please go ahead. Yeah. So just two questions. How responsive is the platform to real-time changes? Is it is it just going to give me data to the stakeholders initially? Or am I part of the process even through uh, the actual deliverables? So when, when you mentioned BIM, it's 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 70 in nature, uh vis-a-vis -vis all its software. So are are we real-time responsive or are we only about preemptive data on our platform? So real-time responsive. Uh the the process of the setup is we, we work with our clients to understand their criteria and that's pass it through our uh, our engine once we have all that setup set up you can access our platform and just simulate as many design options as you would like it's all generated in real time and the only thing that's manual have to download the the design option you like to our rest of the software or autocad but the whole the rest of the, the thing is just everything in real time okay and you and uh, just a follow up, Pankaj. Uh, yeah. If Thomas, is it also beyond design, or can can it also do cost and uh, effort estimation via the platform itself for for implementing those designs real time, or is it just oh. limited? Yeah, we we are working on a on a extension of our solution to create like estimations for for the for design options as well. It's a working process in progress. We should finish by six six months from now. We should implement it using our solution as well. Uh, Rod, I think you have a question. Please go ahead. Yeah. Hey, Thomas. Uh, it was it. It just wasn't super clear to me what the the offering was to the bank, or why why was the bank your main client? Was it for like their their own buildings or? Yeah, it's for their their own buildings. Uh, this bank in Brazil has more than five thousand uh, branches all around the, our country. And they need to constantly redesign, even though they are short, uh, the space are getting smaller, they need to redesign it like every year or so. So there's such a high demand that if they contract a traditional architectural service, it's just too expensive and time consuming. If our solution, they can design as many uh, architecture, uh, as many brands they want with, without the, 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 the hassle to hire new architecture offices. At the same time. Thank you. Okay. Uh, thanks a lot, Thomas, for answering the questions. If you have more questions, please go in the chat section. Uh, next is Cloudworks, which offers a no code platform for creating enterprise metaverse application. And you are going to hear a lot about them in the next few months. That's a hint. Hey. Hi. I'm Liv Raj, founder and CEO of Cloudworks. We've created a no code platform that lets you create 3D apps for enterprise metaverse, such as digital twins, allowing you to achieve business insights 10x faster 
and reduce your time to market by 80%. We call it Cloudwork Studio. Before I start the pitch, I'd like to talk about an inevitable growing force, digitization. Factories are going to look very different by the end of this decade. Every aspect of work that can take place digitally will become more immersive, allowing your workforce to gain real-world, real-time insights right from their desk as they manipulate and interact with the 3D replicas of their factories called digital twins. This is not something that's far-fetched. It's already happening around us. But there's a big problem. Only 0.0007% of factories have implemented it. Because 3D application development is hard. It requires experienced developers, costly game engine licenses, and months to convert your factory to 3D and make it actionable lower an app, driving the cost of one implementation to 1 million per factory, thus out of reach of 6.2 million factories want to implement it but can't. This is not okay. Digital twins are amazing and we want every factory to have this. We just need a framework that combines the elements of 3D and IoT in a no-code fashion so that anyone can create 3D apps without knowing the technical complexities that go behind these solutions. This is where we step in. Our vision is to make digital twins and 3D simple and accessible through our no-code platform that makes the creation of 3D applications as easy as creating a PowerPoint slide. The first step is to connect your sensors, devices, data lakes, and ERP systems. Second, create the look and feel of your app by customizing and editing the web, mobile, and 3D models. Lastly, modify the data parameters, link interactions, create simulations, and embed contextual 3D analytics on your app and publish it in one click. Powered by a tech stack based on a granted US patent, our solution has already been deployed for homes, buildings, factories, ports, terminals, utility centers, and even cities, making them smarter and more efficient and allowing them to make more informed decisions more quickly. We make money in two stages. The first stage is a paid pilot, where we discuss the solution implementation and use cases for the factory type. The second stage is a monthly SDK license, which is given to the enterprises as a sandbox so that they can continue to build and improve on the digital twin applications. Over the past couple of months, we've grown at a rate of 150% quarter over quarter and have been a part of the following accelerator programs. We've also been shortlisted for CDOT for integration with CCSP to enable our no-code digital twin platform. We're also onboarding channel partners in US, ANZ, and the Middle East in Q4. The global digital twin industry was valued at 6.5 billion in 2021 and is projected to reach 125.7 billion by 2030. The best part is that we don't have any direct competitors with our combination of no-code, IoT, and 3D. These are some of the solutions that come very close to achieving what we are doing, and it's clearly evident that they lack the flexibility and no-code capabilities that are offered with Cloudwork Studio. Also, we're the only solution that allows you to take the code output. We run on a browser, so you don't even have to buy AI VRSs for a factory worker. Our team comprises of 15 engineers and developers who come from a gaming, VFX, and IoT background. We're raising a seed round of 2 million for 20% equity, which will be largely used in sales and marketing and product development. The round will give us enough runway for 18 months, during which we will be expanding to the US, Middle East, ANZ, and ASEAN markets and launching the B2D version of the product by Q1 next to school. Join us in this movement. You can reach me on the details provided. And one more thing here's a glimpse of our no code AIML builder. In three clicks, I've created a report predicting my factory's cost and CO2 emissions for the next month. I can plan my decisions accordingly without having to depend on anyone, without writing code, and optimize it in a 3D dashboard through Cloudwork Studio. Thank you. Okay, do we have questions for Yuvraj? And while uh, we are going to ask questions, I'm going to launch a poll. Please take a moment to answer that poll as well. Go ahead, questions for Yuvraj. That, yeah. Thank you for the presentation. Um, how long does the sales cycle last? And can you dive in a little bit deeper on what your patent covers, please? Hmm, sure. So the sales cycle, and that's one of our advantages. We use AI and a lot of 3D photogrammetry to reduce the time it takes to get the 3D model of premise. So in often cases, the time that it takes to create a 3D model of the entire factory scene is as low as two weeks. During the same time, we can even get the pilot conversation started and get a sandbox conversation started. So we can close on the pilot and initial phase on stages within four to six weeks in the best cases or within two months in those worst cases. Okay. And in terms of the patent covers, 
So uh, the entire tech stack is basically a combination of five layers, if I have to break it down in that way. The bottommost being the hardware layer, then the middleware, then the edge, application, and cloud. So the pattern is pretty much about how all of these stitch together so that you get a solution where a 3D application or interactive 3D model is able to talk to a real-time device, which is based on IoT and some other communication protocols. Thank you. Okay, you see the second poll about CloudWorks. So please take a moment to fill that poll as well. Okay, next question to CloudWorks. Um, yeah, hi, I'm Tesh. Uh, Yuvraj, thank you for that pitch. Uh, uh, just one quick question. Do we have an ability to kind of uh, create digital twins or uh, digital uh, models on the hardware layer that we are creating as a co-patented model also? For example, uh, you are in a, in a specific industry, specific hmm. uh, machine optimization that uh, needs to be done and spe hmm. specific sets of predictive analysis that are being expected. Can we have a hardware uh, patent on that also? Uh, yeah, yeah. In the pipeline. yeah, yeah, we can definitely do that. And that's one of the best parts about a technology where you can think of it as Lego blocks. We can basically change on the hardware layer, improve on the patent and file it as a continual innovation, a CI in some sense. Okay. Uh, one request that I have to attendees is that please use chat section for Q&A only. If you want to talk about your services, we'll give you an opportunity in the end of this, uh, of, of all the presentations to talk about your services. So please keep it clean, okay? Thanks a lot, you guys, for the presentation. Next is Kiri, which is a Y Combinator startup providing passwordless authentication to BFSI leaders. And here we go. Hello, my name is Grant, and I'm here to introduce Kiri, which is an authentication company that provides a simple and secure form of passwordless MFA. Our mission is to address the growing need for customer account security in a rapidly increasing digital financial environment. We're a team that has not only demonstrated long-standing thought leadership in the cybersecurity sector, but also has firsthand experience building novel authentication products. And we've surrounded ourselves with a deep bench of investors and advisors with diverse and helpful backgrounds. Now, I think you can guess what the problem is. Passwords are the bane of our existence. Nobody here likes passwords, but I think it's important to quantify what that pain means for your users. Over half of users would abandon a service if their login experience was frustrating. And that's without even taking into account the prevalence of account takeovers, with more than four out of five breaches coming from stolen credentials, phishing, or misuse of passwords. For ideal MFA, we need uncompromised UX and security. Companies have tried to fix this solution by adding MFA, from email magic links to hardware security keys. The problem is, these solutions only solve half the problem, either ease of use or security. As we looked at on the last slide, you need both sides to keep your users and to grow. That's where Kiri comes in establishing an invisible layer of trust without imposing friction across the user journey. For account opening, account login, and subsequent high value transactions such as money transfers, which have now become a, regula a regulatory requirement due to PSD2 in Europe and other parts of the world. How do we do this? Kiri delights users on all devices by transforming every login into a one-step biometrics-based process. Users just scan a QR code on your login page with their smartphone, pass biometrics in your mobile app, and they log they're logged into your web app. This same process can be done for login or any other authentication event as mentioned on the previous slide. Now this next slide shows what your login page might look like with Kiri Auth. You can choose to go full passwordless or just add a QR code next to your existing login methods for a simple and secure experience, similar to what large enterprises like Citibank and SingPass have created. But for the first time, companies productize this approach for you. Now I've focused a lot on simplicity and UX, but underneath that is a unique privacy preserving auth flow. Curry leverages asymmetric cryptography to generate key pairs with the private key being stored on the user's device and the public key being stored in the company's auth server. In between that key generation and transfer process is Curie's API, which acts as an end-to-end -end encrypted relay layer for authentication requests. And one feature that we think is huge is Curry never sees any user data, so the attackers couldn't get anything from us, even if they tried. To add to that security layer, Curry provides comprehensive risk signals that provide extreme anti-phishing protection. By leveraging our cryptographic key pair approach, we're able to help companies establish device fingerprints, device lineage, and precise audit trails. Curie's risk engine looks at a number of factors that are listed here, from checking to see if a device has a fingerprint, to comparing if the IP address distance between the phone and the browser is close. We then work with each company to help determine what signals to allow, warn, and deny for, as shown on the right side of this page. And we've seen some strong traction to date, 
with 400 plus self-serve customers currently leveraging Kiri, six active integrations in process, and we have a deep pipeline of new opportunities as well. To streamline this process, we integrate with IAM providers and work with white label banking and crypto providers, as well as system integrators, so that integration can be completed in as little as a few days. And why do we have this traction? It's because Kiri benefits your entire organization. Looking at an example bank with 1 million users, Kiri helps the lives of product, security, marketing, and customer support teams. First and foremost, Kiri can increase revenue by about 4% by reducing login friction and fraud, while increasing app downloads significantly. On the expense side, we can cut account takeovers by more than 80% while reducing call center volumes to put money back in your pockets. Finally, let's look at our expansion goals. We plan to raise between eight and $10 million to fund sales and marketing expansion within our existing product offerings while expanding our authentication solution to include Appless QR login and platform biometrics, as well as mobile application security. With Kiri, you can add a lot by adding so little. To let your users stop fraud, add a Kiri QR code to your authentication flow today. Thank you. Okay, questions for Kiri? Do you remember us? Yep, go ahead, Eda. Yeah, uh, I just had a question uh, on the business model and can you just elaborate more on that? Sure, Ada. Uh, this is Seth, I'm one of the co-founders. Uh, our business model is basically based on selling our core authentication product and fraud features uh, to fintechs, to financial institutions. Uh, and within fintech, we kind of target, uh, broadly speaking, robo-advisors, trading platforms, crypto exchanges, uh, and any other sort of applications where consumer security is paramount. And uh, the way we monetize that is on a monthly active user basis. We charge anywhere from a cent to half a cent per monthly active user that logs in through our Kiri API. Thank you. There's a poll on the screen. Brian, please go ahead. Hi, thanks for the presentation. Could you discuss some of the metrics that kind of describe how your solution is better than other current solutions on the market um, in regards to breaches or you know, other things? Thanks. Right, uh, Brent, that's a good question. I think in terms of um, how the solutions are comparable, what we have to look at is a status quo today, which is mostly SMS OTP or if it's OTP via email or through a app like a Google Authenticator. This is the main problem that we see with MFA is there's a shared secret. Either there's a username and password or there's an SMS OTP, which can be intercepted by a man in the middle phishing attack. Uh, all, those, all those sort of MFA processes are prone to, uh, to attacks, but the fundamental technology that we use based on cryptographic keys, which are never transferred over HTTPS, fundamentally blocks any such attacks. Uh, I would love to say uh, we can block everything, but in MFA, nothing is 100%, but we can be extremely phishing resistant compared to anything else that's out there in the market today. Thank you. Okay. Thanks a lot, uh, Seth, for answering questions. Next is Libera, which is unlocking the power of retail consumer data in developing nations using Web3. And here we go. Hi, it's my pleasure to introduce Libera to you today. Our mission is to liberate people around the world by unlocking the power of the data that they have at their fingertips. The problem we're solving is that the retail sector and the world's largest markets is mostly managed by pen and paper. And billions of people on the foundation of these supply chains have no way to share very valuable data. The brands can't forecast demand. They don't know what product to put in what warehouse. And this creates too much lost sales unsustainable waste and an over one trillion US dollar trade finance gap from suppliers to merchants. Our solution is the first to obtain sales data in these markets from all retailers with micro incentives and predict demand while increasing sales for the brands and merchants, empowering millions of micro retailers at the base of the supply chain to have a more profitable business and to sustainably generate new income from selling their data through our unique share to earn approach and getting access to working capital to expand their business. We enable new mechanisms for data acquisition. This collaboration trend is a fantastic one across many industries, but it really impacts the retail and supply chain space. With our recently launched first ever tokenized micro retail point of sale app running on Android, we have obtained government endorsement and support for the Libera Retail product, 
and we're working to democratically incentivize retailers across the Philippines and in other markets. Through our second product, the Libera Connect platform for the movement of goods, we already have data touching almost 300,000 stores in the Philippines, but also a complete operations platform for intelligent distribution with warehousing, transport, order management, and e-commerce. This is more than any other supply chain provider in the market, and we're rapidly driving traction and revenues with this unique combination. Libera AI, our third product, uses data from Libera Retail and Libera Connect to build predictive analytics and make supply chain management more efficient. For example, telling shippers which products are in most demand and what needs to be ordered so it's in stock to avoid lost sales. Our current focus is the Philippines, but we're eyeing immediate expansion into Indonesia and looking to expand into Vietnam and other fast-growing populations where the populations are in excess of 100 million and the same supply chain problems manifest over and over, giving us an incredibly large addressable market. We're starting to work with a number of multinational brands and very importantly have recently obtained the endorsement of, of Gartner at the regional level, but also the government here in the Philippines. We're moving into profit this month through revenues on the Libera Connect platform and raising capital to deploy Liber Libera Retail to more stores so that we can generate additional revenue selling this data to banks, corporate clients like 7-Eleven and others. We have some opportunities in the pipeline that are over 1 million US dollars in annual revenue each. There are other new players starting to target this micro retail point of sale space, which is rapidly digitizing, but we're looking to outcompete them with better AI, Web3, and access to working capital by integrating with banks and fintechs. We ultimately punch into this very valuable space of enterprise data management where companies like Snowflake and Databricks have built valuations in the tens of billions of dollars, but nobody's done it yet in this part of the world. I have a career of experience in Asia supply chain and entrepreneurship, including a decade working with multinationals. And my co-founder, Johan, knows more about Southeast Asia supply chain technology than anyone. Together, we've built the best possible team for this venture, including some of the world's greatest minds in data science and AI, as well as local experts to guide us. Currently, we're focused on raising capital to drive revenues and acquire more data, expanding our solution to up to half a million small retailers by early next year. Please contact me if you'd like to join us on this revolutionary journey. That is the high energy pitch from Max. Questions? Yeah. Hey, if I may, um, how, how do you look into get into other markets than, uh, uh, than the current uh, focus areas that you have? Well, a big part of it is integrating with, with multinationals. So actually, I'm in Jakarta today, and we had a great meeting with, with Mondelez, uh, you know, talking about rolling out for 200,000 stores. And so really, we're already engaged with Mondelez in two countries. But, you know, Mondelez, you know, big multinational snack foods leader, uh, you know, they're all over emerging markets. They have the same problem everywhere. Same thing with Nestle and Unilever. Uh, and I, I've actually spent my career in strategic account management uh, around multinational supply chains at DHL and other companies before I got into uh, entrepreneurship. Um, my previous uh, startup uh, did exactly that on uh, transport management, worked with Nestle in six countries. So multinationals are a real key to uh, get in the door and, and expand and the, expand the uh, the company's market presence. I think I'll have to take questions from questions from Rod. He comes from a very field background. Rod, please go ahead. Yeah, my question is more more to more regarding how you get into the stores or does it have to be like leveraging a uh, multinational and then get into the stores? Like, is it only multinational stores or can you go into mom and pop shops? Is no, that not, go, just not your no, market? We go into mom and pops directly as well. So we're, you know, currently linked up with 170,000 mom and pop shops or called sorry, sorry stores in the Philippines. And we want to, you know, extend our, technology further. There's about a million such stores in, in the Philippines. But when you get in with Mondelez and you know, some of these other partnerships on the go-to-market plan that we have, including 7-Eleven and, and, um, and the banks, uh, it just opens up more channels more quickly. And you know, distributors open up stores by the tens of thousands, basically. So, so you use distributors to reach these mom and pop shops? Or how do you... How uh, yeah. do you... Yeah, it's, it's the, we have distribution management software in addition to software for the mom and pops. Okay. 
Yeah. Okay. okay. It will have to move on to the next presentation. And yeah. if you have more questions, please use the chat section. Next is NM Optim, which is a Hong Kong based startup helping manufacturing and logistics clients to transform their manual production and logistics scheduling. There you go. Imagine a system that can automatically configure optimize the scheduling plans. Imagine it can coordinate all the available resources, traverse across millions of possible schedules, and then select the most cost efficient one. Instead of taking hours to do so, as most skilled planners would require, this system can do it within a couple of minutes. NM Optim has built such a system. We do it based on innovative operations research technology. Given a scheduling problem, we can convert it to a mathematical model. And then by applying optimization algorithms, we'll get the optimal solution, which in turn gives us the best scheduling plan. The two crucial steps in between are packaged as the system we offer to clients. As simple as using a calculator, users only need to input data to our system and then we'll get the decision they want. As a real case, our system is being deployed in a listed manufacturer in China. Our system enables dynamic data-driven scheduling, thus empowering a faster response to common production disruptions or any rescheduling need. Machine idle time, late penalties, labor costs can all be reduced, translating to a cost of saving of 20% for our clients which means millions of RMB per year for each plant. Apart from production scheduling, our system also applies to data mining, employee rostering, and logistics scheduling. For each, we have also secured clients and observed a significant cost reduction. There are a few competitors in the market. The major one is APS system. Compared with them, our system is more flexible, user-friendly, and can satisfy the customized needs at a lower cost. Here is our revenue model. In early stage, we charge development fees. In duplication stage, we sell our system to other clients in the same industry. Our system addresses the most encountered problems in a certain industry. Therefore, it can be sold to other clients in the same industry with only minor adjustments. This gives us a huge revenue potential. This is our core team. We have professors and PhDs from renowned universities, specialized in AI optimization, IT, and BD. We we'll leverage on the extensive business network of our team, as well as the experience accumulated from existing projects to expand business quickly. We just got started, but we are growing fast. Currently, we mainly focus on clients in Hong Kong and Greater China as our beachhead. In the coming two years, we'll expand to global markets. Our goal is to become the leading supplier of data-driven scheduling solutions in the Asia-Pacific region. As for fundraising, we plan to do it in half a year's time. We'll ask for 2 million US dollars for 10% shares, and the money will be used for R&D as well as business development. With NM Optim, factories are one step nearer to Industry 4.0. Are you ready to join us on this exciting journey? Okay. Questions for Shay? Yeah, uh, here, Jose San Pedro. So what evidence or traction do you have to show that this pain point is strong enough uh, for people to be willing to pay for it at this point? Okay, thanks for the question. Well, actually in China and in Hong Kong, uh, we already, already have secured a lot of uh, clients from different uh, manufacturing industries. Yeah, um, and um, most of them are very large state-owned companies in China. Yeah, and well, we, we have got this paying clients and um, 
Uh, and after we deliver the first project, they uh, would love to continue with us um, by uh, giving us the scheduling projects for other plans. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, yeah. Yeah. Uh, hi, Sherry. Uh, hi. Just a quick question on the, the data visibility that you're being able to establish on the savings that the optimized data brings in. Uh, for example, if there is an analog process in place right now, how is the process because of an optim providing for a saving? Do we have a direct real-time wallet to kind of calculate that? Uh, well, actually, the, the solution we provide is um, the, from data to decision. So um, we are actually uh, essentially different from the uh, those AI solutions. So we don't uh, require a lot of data. We just need some basic data. And usually the uh, factories can provide enough data for us to um, deliver the scheduling solution. And then we do not have a, a real-time interface with the unit client to tell them how much have we actually saved in the particular process. Uh, you mean you mean how much we save um, for, for them per decision per decision per metric which whichever metric you might want to kind of follow do we do we have a mechanism for that already built in or in the tech pipeline for the future because that would be a big way in which these people will take a decision so can we can we possibly visualize the savings on the on the intelligent routing that the system could do. Yeah, actually, we can, we can, because we can reduce their um idle time, machine idle time, the late penalties, and uh, and of course we can reduce the number of um scheduling people. Okay, yeah. thanks a lot, Sherry. Uh, moving on to the next presentation, B2 Metric. It's a 30-day startup helping Fortune 500 clients predict and reduce customer churn using artificial intelligence. And Hi everyone, this is Murat. I am CEO of B2Metric. B2Metric is an AI-powered customer journey predictive analytics solutions for marketing and growth teams of each company size that predicts user behaviors in real time and optimizes user retention by understanding customers' next actions. So what are the problems in the market? The most common problems are low user retention rates, unsuccessful behavior analytics, and lack of understanding customer behavior and non-optimized campaigns. B2Metric provides a unifying layer of a platform that learns continuously and orchestrates customer journeys and product analytics across all interactions in digital apps. Data analytic teams are using explainable AI and AutoML features. However, product and marketing teams use crystal clear B2ML analytics dashboards and intelligent marketing features. In addition, B2Metric serves fully GDPR and data privacy compliance solutions and services that can run on-premises and cloud-based. In first stage, self-service plug and play, data integration from thousands of data silos. And secondly, we run automated modeling process with a few clicks to create a predictive modeling pipeline with continuing business learning. Then it feeds a real-time analytics dashboard for growth and product teams. So here it shows 360 degree B2M customer journey predictive platform use cases. B2Metric analyzes only channel data from product event analytics, marketing automation, and CRMs, and many more. Then creates the best user segments, automatically analyzes each user's behaviors and growth trends, and also generates predictions of the user's next best actions. Our marketing growth optimizes creates AI-based recommendation that increase user retention 35% and also increases sales and incomes by 30% on average. Hi, this is Tuna. I'm CTO of Bitmetic. With the BTM IQ Analytics platform, we aim to increase user retention by up to 25% with the AI-based personalized campaigns and marketing action results. Also, we optimize personalized marketing campaigns and user segments with the monitoring user behaviors. Of course, brands are using different marketing platform solutions according to their growth needs. Bitmetic combines all the data points from all these platforms into one dashboard, which saves 60% time and effort. You can see an example of Bitmetic IQ Analytics demo screen. All target sectors have their own customized predictive analytics insights dashboard into Bitmetic platforms. For easy to use and readability, dashboards and ML models can be easily redesigned and used by the marketing team members. 
For instance, Allianz Insurance digital platforms use Bitometric to increase user open rates and retention in their mobile apps up to 30%, cross-selling and upselling by up to 15%. Likewise, in our dashboards for other customers, we follow different metrics such as trends of users, screen flows, when the user open the apps and when they stop, so and so forth. Our company raised 450k in 2021. We are expecting 400 year of year growth for the next year from now on. We are looking for a strategic angels and VCs. We are targeting $1 million revenue for the next year. For seed round, our target is raising $3 million and already got committed $1 million. The market size of customer journey predictive analytics is potentially expected to grow $7 million in 2028. B2Metric Marketing Intelligence is trusted by the brands like Allianz, Avis, Tur Telecom, MediaMark, and MetLife, Zurich, ActiveBank, and 50 more global brands in 8 countries. Thank you so much for listening to us. Okay, that was B2Metric questions. How are you going to build a moat around your data set as you train your recommendation engine uh i couldn't get jose what do you mean yeah, as a so, was, so in other words the way i look at some of these uh some of the, the ai model companies is there's two possible modes one is compute having an advantage in compute that nobody can match and that's really just nvidia um and then the second one is having a unique data set access to a unique set of data that's going to allow you to train your model for better recommendations. Those are two of the most important modes that I typically see in these companies. And I'm wondering from, from your perspective on the data set side, um, how are you building that? Okay, perfect. So first data sets are coming from our clients. Let's talk about Allianz. Um, they are using Google Analytics and they have policy creation platform and they have CRM, which is connected to the V2Metric IQ analytics. So what does it, uh, what do V2Metric does is Google Analytics has some already defined structured data points in Google BigQuery that we have done already the integration for this data mark before. And we do plug and play uh, integration with Google Analytics of our clients, for instance, Allianz. And then we specify and generate one b metric ID. And then we put this ID to their CRM, Google Analytics, and put their mobile app, and also to other tools that we can easily watch to all the user journey from all different data uh, storages and data uh, resources. So which makes us to create one unique data mart uh, for your customers, uh, like CRM data, user event data, product analytics data, even for your customers' transaction and payment data. We put every event with one B2M ID, which makes us unify the data that comes from all the data silos. We have already done the integration with more than 50 data resources like SAP, AWS, DynamoDB, Google, and Amplitude, so and so forth. If you have one of these data MarTech solutions, we do uh, just you can give an access to us and we put our ID on top of that. And then we generate our unified uh, data Mart and run our predictive models on top of that data Mart. And, which is all specifically defined data mark for our predictive models like churn prediction and propensity prediction. Oh, well, yeah, thanks. Um, thank you. Sanjay. Sanjay, please go ahead. Yeah, uh, just, you know, offline, can you share, is there any intellectual property related to augmented intelligence or any other intellectual property that your uh, company has? Uh, you can hit me up offline and I'm ready to go here on the next one. Thank you, Pankaj. Yes, thank you. Yeah, I'm going to share. Thanks a lot, Sanjay. Thanks a lot, Murat. Next is Ikenjun, which is a Swiss B state startup serving 50 world's Fortune 500 organizations with video analytics platform. And here we go. Hi, I'm Paul Sun, the CEO for Ikenjun. Ikenjun is an AI video analytics software company for the B2B marketplace. Ikenjun is headquartered in Stanford, Connecticut, US, with branch offices in Singapore, Taiwan, and Europe. Our mission is to become the leader in AI vision. 
The market for AI security and AI vision is one of the fastest growing field in the IT world. The problem we're solving is currently there are over a billion security cameras deployed worldwide in cities, enterprises, corporations, and many critical infrastructure locations. The majority of these cameras are not actively being mounted in real time. Our flagship AI vision product is called Video. Video is composed of over 30 security and software analytics modules. The type of use cases including security related and safety of video search, appearance search, person and face search, vehicle license plate identification, face recognition, weapons detection, smoke and fire recognition. Our software product is currently deployed in over, over 30 countries. For example, the Lulu Mall is one of the largest retail chains in Asia. Our AI software are now deployed in six malls in India, including this mall shown here, the Bangalore. The second example is a prestigious critical infrastructure project in Abu Dhabi, the Emirates Nuclear Power Energy Corporation, which operates the largest nuclear power plant in the Middle East. Third example is our customer in Taiwan, Formosa Plastic, one of the largest chemical manufacturing company in the world. Many of you follow the World Cup soccer in Qatar. I mean, video, AI video analytics are deployed in over 300 World Quad gas stations. The main applications are video search, license plate recognition, vehicle make, and model identification. Other examples in the U.S. market, the Gillette Stadium, one of the largest stadiums where the Patriots uh, National Football League team plays in Foxborough, Massachusetts. The second is an ally bank where they deploy our video nationwide. A third example is the Disney ESPN corporate headquarters. We have a very capital efficient go-to-market sales model. Our software is sold primarily through our channel partners and system integrators, including some of the largest um, integrator in the U.S., Convergent Technology, Siemens Global, Annexter, and ADI. We have recruited a seasoned experience management team. I, I am a serial entrepreneur with many successful access in venture-backed startup companies. Example is a company I started called DSL.net. The, the, the company went public on NASDAQ in 2001 with an IPO valuation of over 1.5 billion. To meet our growing customer demand and explosive sales, Iron is currently raising a 12 million Series B round. Of the 12 million round, 7.2 million, or 60% of the capital has already been committed. We're looking for additional five million more in new capital. Thank you. Okay, do we have questions for Paul? Yeah, sure. Could you please elaborate more on the business model? How do you charge? Yeah, so we have uh, two business models. One is a software licensing, where we charge per camera, per software module being used. The second is a SaaS model where it's based on a monthly payment. So both of those model is um, how we go to market with. Okay, next is Brian. Brian, please go ahead. Hi, Paul, thank you for the presentation. Um, do you have any government contracts and how does your revenue pie uh, split up between private and government if so? Yeah, it, uh, we do have government uh, contracts, but uh, they're not materially, uh, none of our customers are representing more than 10% of our uh, revenue. Uh, for year 2022, uh, we'll be looking at about 5 million. So uh, we have over 400 enterprise customers. Okay, thank you. Jose, thank you, friend. last question. Yeah, thanks. Um, so in addition to selling through your tech and security channel partners, do you also target uh, promoters of uh, real estate constructions or 
either real estate funds or companies that that actually yeah, build that develop the buildings or infrastructure. Yeah, good good question. Um, um, it hasn't been a focus, but I, I think you're right. Um, we 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 can definitely uh, target some of the larger root um, realty uh, operators. Uh, it, it's an opportunity uh, for us. We have not targeted today. Okay. Cool. Cool. Talk. Thanks. Thanks. Thanks a lot, Paul. Next is Expedente Azul. Uh, it's a Mexican startup offering an automated customer onboarding tool to B two B lending organizations. And get go. According to the World Bank, easy access to capital is an important activity that improves a community well being. We are here to narrow down the space between money and the correct hands that can put it to work. Hi, my name is Juan Carlos Gonzalez, co-founder of Expediente Azul. Expediente Azul is a highly specialized, wide-label SaaS platform that digitalizes all document gathering process, automate follow-up on data submission, interconnect on the fraud technology, and eliminate all the manual work needed to consolidate a case file in a secure and centralized data room. Our customers value us through our fast implementation process, low entry costs, and ultra-flexible, no-code onboarding platform that unstructured data markets need. On the other side of the coin, we are creating an ecosystem where big financial institutions can meet with smaller ones in order to help fund their operations. Again, we are getting capital closer to the correct hands. Do you share the excitement with us? Our go-to-market strategy in other geographies besides Mexico has been implemented in Brazil, Puerto Rico, Ecuador, and Colombia. The process has been the following one. First, we find a strong local player in one or more industry that we know we can deliver value, like financial institutions, brokers, real estate, insurance, legal services. In general, any service that needs plenty of information and documents before serving its own customers. Later on, we create a joint strategy and agree upon a business model that we can stick to. After an initial validation with a small prospect list, we tropicalize and fine tune our wording in order to start scaling up our commercial endeavor. By the last quarter of 2022, we serve more than 120 customers in Mexico, Caribe, Ecuador, Colombia, and Brazil. Besides that, we are opening operations in Singapore and Peru. Right now, we are raising half a million dollars in order to consolidate our presence in the markets we serve. We have ambitions planned on product development, marketing, and really talented headcount. We have been growing more than 200% each year since 1919, and we will surpass this tendency this 2022 and 2023 thanks to the new markets that we are exploring and the maturity of our technology. I will love to hear from you. We appreciate experience, network, or capital that can help us out to narrow down the space between the capital and the best hands that can put it to work. Thank you. Okay, questions for Juan? Yep, Rod, please go ahead. Uh, thank you, Juan. Uh, I just, I would like to know a little bit more about what type of clients you, you have, maybe, I mean, it could be specific or just the type of clients, like size. What, yes, what for sure. Companies? Thanks. Great, uh, Rod. We, we serve um, private financing institutions that need to scale up their sales process, banking, uh, financial brokers, uh, which uh, helps small and medium-sized companies to, uh, to get some capital, uh, insurance companies as well. In general, uh, we serve corporate services that need plenty of documents before uh, it can deliver its own value to their own customers. So, and yes, Mexico, uh, so firms, which is a prior financial institutions are our sweet spot in the market. Next question from Brian. Thank you for the presentation, Juan. Um, how much are you charging for your product? And uh, what's your ARR? and your forecast for 23, please. Loaded question. Great, great. Uh, because we can serve from brokers 
to big banks. Actually, we have just closed a bank in, in Jakarta, in Indonesia, uh, it's, uh, it's per usage. So we can start from $50 a month until you, we grow all the operations and all the onto fraud technology and all the bundle that we are um, that we are uh, trying to deliver. So it's per usage. So it's kind of difficult because we serve a, a broad market. And well, we in 2023 we are uh, are achieving almost 3x our current uh, valuation, which is more or less. I think Roberto has an exact number, which is... Charlie, you can answer that question. We are so surpassing $1 million, the okay, annual revenue you. model. Appreciate it, thank right. you. Okay, uh, any other question? Okay, uh, moving on to the next presentation, Mobile Cards. It's a CRM membership and loyalty solution from Hong Kong, which is helping 500 plus f and and retail organizations in Hong Kong and Taiwan. And now they're expanding in Southeast Asia, Singapore, Malaysia, really fast. Here we go. I'm Keith Lee from Mobile Cards. Let's talk about SaaS CRM solution. When we talk to owners of small shops, about marketing automation or CDP. They have no idea of what it is. They all know that enterprise got unparalleled advantage on business by making good use of data. But what about small merchants? That's why we're here, to bring small to medium merchants enterprise level loyalty solution in SaaS model enabling them to automate marketing strategies and retain customers, just like what the biggest corporates are doing. We equip merchants with app and online tools. Call an example, boosting the gross amount per sushi order by 40% with a good user experience. Speed up cake shop member acquisition by three times means speed up the mobile cake ordering. Our solution can help companies from different sectors, from retail, F&B, to even service industry. We got really good traction, engaged more than 500 happy customers in our portfolio. We make our customers happy and their customers loyal. So what is our key to success? We have a good product. Our proprietary one-minute build self-service platform turned the merchant's Facebook page into a loyalty application, Speedy. Promotion, booking, ordering, SME merchants are now affordable to roll out enterprise-grade rewards rule sets to enhance stickiness with their customers. Thanks to Open API, we are connecting with more than 20 solution providers or partners in different regions to enable a holistic total solution. We not only bring merchants a CRM software, but lead them to enter an ecosystem of digital experience. We have been actively promoting our products and recognized by various renowned industry awards. We found in 2016, then organically expanded to Taiwan in 2019. We are trusted by international brands and we hit more than 1.5 million US dollar revenue in 2021. We are expanding with real profit. We got 145% revenue and 94% profit year-on-year -year growth in 2021. We found the pandemic actually unveiled the real value of SaaS business. Mobile cards is highly scalable, widely beloved by merchants in Hong Kong, Taiwan, and we are now entering the Southeast Asia market. We are looking for strategic investors in Southeast Asia with business connections to speed up our expansion to Singapore, Malaysia, and Thailand. 
The fund will be used for building up teams and localized products, which would quickly contribute revenue in return. It's our target to be a leader of SaaS marketing tech business in the region. I am Keith Lee, the founder of MobileCast. Thank you. Okay, do we have questions for MobileCast? We have Jesse and Keith to answer your questions, and we have Paul on your screen. Okay. Uh, it seems there is no question yet. There is a question for Expedient Azul uh, in the chat section. Okay, please go ahead. Yeah. Hi, Keith. Uh, just one uh, one reference on how are you selling to different sectors? What are the various revenue models that we are having right now with respect to retail and, uh, and let's say something in the FMCG BFSI sector? Is it is it a different financial uh, reference for each one of them or do you go by a slabified approach? Hi, uh, I'm Jeffrey from Mobilecast, also one of the co-founders. So yeah, I, I'll take this question. So uh, in terms of the sectors or revenue distribution, it's basically very similar, like because uh, our model runs on, uh, part of it is on a subscription basis. So we charge on the uh, per branch monthly fee. So uh, uh, regardless of whether they're retail or FMB industry, uh, we actually also um, like based on their branch and do the monthly revenue. And then for the exact figures, uh, right now we are actually doing around 50-50. Like um, uh, part of it, uh, like 50, half of it is from FMB and then the other half is from retail as well. So. And then uh, actually not entirely have enough because we also have a, uh, a small part of it is from let's say hospitality and also service industry as well. So, yeah. Okay. Um, any other question? Okay. If there's no other question, then I would like to move on to Promex, which is offering a platform for exchange of carbon credits. And here we go. Hi everyone, my name is Mark Ho, a co-founder of Promax. My name is Guido Grivania, also a co-founder of Promax. Promax is a marketplace to buy, sell, and manage voluntary carbon credits. On our platform, buyers and sellers will interact and trade on a central electronic order book without any intermediaries, and the resulting transactions are settled instantly. We deliver transparency, efficiency, and low costs to all our users. Our aim is to get everyone access to carbon credits, and we are regulated by the Hong Kong government. Let's take a look at the industry problems. First, carbon markets are complex and assessed through different layers of intermediaries. Some VCC's offerings are of poor quality. Prices and transactions are intransparent and not consolidated, and it's quite difficult for consumers and SMEs to assess the carbon market. Promax solves this problem. First, we operate an open and efficient regulated marketplace. Our technology is user-friendly and highly scalable with robotic onboarding, central order book, as well as supporting common payment channels. Our inclusive market models and high quality BCC are accessible by all verified companies and individuals. Carbon market is global and its size is growing very really fast. The annual transaction value has grown four times year on year. It's forecast to grow 15 next to 30 x by 2030. Our technology platform is live and operational, and we have secure commitment from business partners to assess our carbon market, including Treasure Carbon, a major advisory firm in Shanghai, two ESG consulting firms in Hong Kong, an island-based climate fund, as well as a China-based panel. Over to you, Will. We are working with reputable registries to list top carbon credits. Through our personal network, we committed both buyers and sellers of carbon credits to generate initial liquidity on our marketplace. Next year, we can start scaling our platform with more products and choices for our users. There is no market leader in our space yet, as it is still in its infancy. We stand out as being regulated in Hong Kong, building trust with users, providing a low-cost transaction platform with 50 to 80% lower fees than our competition, and by shaping an inclusive market model. We have a diversified and experienced team with the right skill set to execute our business strategy, supported by expert advisors. 
Multiple sources of revenues let us earn attractive margins along the value chain of carbon trading, predicted to grow rapidly. With our proprietary technology stack and lean cost structure, we can break into this market and be very competitive from the start. We can be faster, more agile and focused on users. Our revenues are projected to grow exponentially, modeled on realistic scenarios for our possible market share in the growing carbon markets. We previously raised 500,000 US dollars and are now looking to raise an additional 1 million US dollars from strategic investors. We hope you enjoyed the presentation and look forward to further dialogue. Okay, that is Promix. We have a question from Jose. Please go ahead. Yeah, two part question. Thank you for the presentation. One is why do you think none of the that there is no market leader in the space? And second, how does the regular the, the fact that you're regulated by the Hong Kong government help you? Thanks. Um, thanks, Jose. Um, I'm Marco. Um uh, first of all, the um um I'll answer the second question first. Um, I think it's a new market. So uh, the Hong Kong government has been promoting uh, the usage of you know, carbon credits to, um, to offset footprints by corporates. And uh, you know, as you may know, the Hong Kong exchanges has also launched the core climate, which is good because um, as we interact with more corporates in Hong Kong and, and through our ESG consulting partners, you know, many of the corporates are new to this market space. Okay, they heard about carbon credits, but actually they don't understand how to make use of carbon credits for their own offset and how to distinguish the high quality carbon credits from the low quality ones. So um, I think that that's fantastic uh, for us, yeah. Okay, next question. Okay, if you have more questions, please use the chat section. Uh, next is Chain of Demand, which is a Hong Kong based startup providing retail investors access to professional grade investment opportunities using a no code AI platform and proprietary data set. And here we go. Hi, my name is AJ Mack, and I'm the founder and CEO of Chain of Demand. We are a next generation AI investment platform for the new generation of investors. The recent market meltdown sparked by the collapse of the crypto exchange FTX has highlighted two important points. Number one, investors need to diversify their portfolio and invest in multiple asset classes. Number two, social media's undeniable impact on market movements calls for better social media and analytics. But there's just so much data out there and across so many different channels, it's almost impossible to collect crunch, and comprehend everything in a short amount of time, especially in today's fast-changing markets. There's a saying that goes, during a gold rush, sell shovels. And that's exactly what we're doing. Our integrated investment platform offers professional-grade tools and data sets for investors to create their own AI trading signals and investment strategies, all the while not having to write a single line of code at a fraction of the cost and in just five minutes, which is over a thousand times faster than the average five days it takes professionals to create their own AI models from scratch. From charts to strategy backtesting to automated trading bots, expert traders can leverage the power of AI to supercharge their investments. For general investors, we offer simple trading signals as well as verified strategies that they can easily invest into and earn passive income. As an example, one of our internal strategies for Avalanche that tracks news and social media data, among other metrics, was able to capture profit over the week of the FTX crisis. News first broke out on November 2nd, and as our model analyzed data over that weekend, it triggered an entry signal for a short position on November 6th, right before the drop, and then triggered an exit signal on November 8th, right before a rebound. Of course, our models are not always correct, but it's examples like this that shows how our platform can help investors not only make profit, but also minimize risk. 
One of our main advantages is that we're the first and only investment platform to offer users the ability to create their own AI signals without any coding. While there are other platforms out there that offer data or trading bots, they're all purely based on technical analysis to generate signals. Our technology was partly co-developed with Carnegie Mellon University, one of the top AI universities in the world. We've also been analyzing alternative data and building our proprietary NLP models for the past five years, giving us a unique advantage over the competition. We're looking to engage in corporate partnerships to scale our business to the millions of investors that are already using different exchanges, brokerages, and financial platforms. Our revenue model includes monthly subscription plans for individuals and professionals, as well as fees and rebates from our partnerships. Even before our public launch, we've already had over 700 users sign up on the waiting list. And usage from early beta users continues to increase by over 50% month over month. We've also been in discussion with half a dozen funds and exchanges for potential collaborations. Our management team has a combined 50 years of experience in data analytics, finance, machine learning, and building tech platforms. We're now looking for strategic investors and partners to help us fulfill unmet market needs and to reach 1 million in ARR in the next 18 months. Contact us now for a demo and a free trial subscription. Thank you, and we look forward to meeting with you. Okay, he is ready to answer your difficult questions. If I may, uh, could I ask uh, uh, how many, uh, I mean, if you can differentiate between the professional investors and the retail investors that you have, uh, what is the percentage of uh, each side that you currently have as a subscription and what is your current ARR? So for retail investors versus uh, professional investors, I would say it's about 80% professional investors and 20% retail investors. So what we're looking to build is a platform that leverages the power of the 20% expert investors to create strategies and profitable, uh, profitable um, signals that the 20% of retail investors can invest into. So far, we are just in a private beta. So we have about uh, 80 users right now, but even before our launch, we've had over 700 users you know, signing up on our waiting list. Any other questions? Question. Yeah, please. Yeah, sure. Since most of your, your clients are retail, how you how do you plan to to approach the probably large CAC, the cost of acquisition you will have? Like what are your strategies towards go to market and, and growth? Yeah, so we understand that the you know B2C strategy or you know money burning strategy that have been used you know, by the likes of you know, WeWork and Uber is no longer feasible. So for our go-to-market strategy, we are looking for potential partnerships with the likes of uh, you know, TradingView, um, S&P, different brokerages, uh, exchanges, and financial platforms that already have a lot of users. So if you're a trader, you would probably have seen that most of the exchanges or brokerages are using TradingView as a plugin. But the downside is that TradingView only allows you to create signals or strategies based on technical indicators. And technical indicators, you know, it is very commonplace. So we are providing something that is one step above technical indicators where you can leverage AI to create your own custom signals. So by working with you know, these platforms, we are leveraging a B2B to C model where our platform and our features and our product 
could be plugged into all of these different platforms and then further expanded to the millions of users that are already on these other platforms. Thanks a lot, AJ. Uh, I know Jose has a question, but I would request Jose to put that in the chat section. Uh, now, these are all the presentations, but now I would request our jury members to share their thoughts on the startup. Probably you can talk about one or two startups that stood out for you. And I would start with Akit. Go ahead, Akit. Yeah. So, Pankaj, pretty well curated. Thank you. Great, great mix uh, of startups. Uh, as far as uh, the product market fit is concerned, most of them have got it uh, on point right now. The only thing that I think they can focus a little more on is on the differentiability and the defensibility bit of it, because uh, because the areas and the industries that they are talking about are being explored by so many other platforms globally. So uh, if they can possibly focus sure. on that. Obviously, personal favorites and personal touch points is something that I've already done with the unit founders, uh, one of them being Agen and the other being Cloudworks. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Akhil. Ada? Yeah, overall, very good. I loved hearing about all these presentations. Uh, great to see. I think just a general uh, basis for all these startups that have presented with their pitch decks is just to keep uh, the business model very clear to investors and so they can understand. I noticed a lot of times uh, the jury was asking a lot of the time uh, over the uh, feedback, and that was a common question. Uh, very impressed with uh, B2 metric, uh, very built out mature product to really love just the uh, enhanced uh, UI that I could see from there. Uh, and uh, definitely, that was very okay. interesting. And thanks a lot. Aniket, uh, two startups that stood out from your perspective. Hey, uh, yeah, by the way, congratulations to, to all the team members who did very impressed. Uh, and then, yeah, I would also uh, echo one of the earlier team members that uh, would, would definitely suggest focusing a lot on differentiation and also maybe highlighting uh, your specific right to win uh, when, when you're, when you're uh, presenting your, your company. Uh, my favorite uh, startups uh, would be, yeah, one would definitely be B2 metrics uh, for me as well. Uh, and and actually the other one would be mobile cards uh, where uh, just like loved loved the loved the niche focus of both of these uh, companies on on like them focusing on a very specific problem. Uh, so yeah. Thanks a lot, Ankit. Uh, Brian. Uh, thank you very much. Great job presenting everybody. Um, I would probably focus most uh, going forward on what your competitive advantage is over the incumbent competition. Um, and kind of talking about your moat a little bit more, um, but I think everybody did a great job. Um, in particular, I was impressed with Iron Yoon. Um, they have, uh, as they said, 400 enterprise customers. So I think they have, they're got the ball rolling and things are looking pretty good for them. Also, Kiri was impressive to me. Thank you again for inviting us. Thanks. Thanks a lot, Brian. Rod? Sure. Thanks everyone for, for your pitches and, and great job as well. Uh, I have two points. Uh, I, in, in line with what Ada said, um, I think it would be good for all of you to present your business model in a kind of visual diagrammatic way, just to like uh, at a glance, uh, be able to view like how things are working. Um, Sorry if somebody did that and I might have missed it. And also, uh, it, it's interesting to me the prevalence of of how how many of these products are no code tools. So I I just like how that simplifies things a bit for sure. for users uh, to kind of customize everything. And well, some of my favorite uh, startups that I saw were uh, Mobile Cards, Iron Yoon, and Expedient Azul. So, yeah, thanks everybody. Expediente as well as your neighbor. So, probably <laughs> you can read yeah. that pretty quickly. Okay. Uh, uh, Santiago? Yeah, sure. Congratulations, everyone. The, the presentations were very interesting. I would also say that uh, you should focus a little bit more on, on storytelling, maybe on value proposition, you know, to differentiate between what the competitors might be. Might be doing and what you bring, what different thing you bring to the table. And um, two startups I like a lot 
where Expediente Azul, maybe it's biased because I'm from LATAM and I experienced that problem firsthand. So yeah, Expediente Azul and I also like Iron, Iron June. I thought the, the team was very senior and, and they have achieved a lot in, in very few time, no small time. That's it. That's awesome. Thanks a lot. Did I miss anybody? anybody yeah, Jose here. Yeah, Jose, please. Yeah. So one quick recommend. Thank you very much, everyone. Um, one quick recommendation would be to focus a little bit more on your stake, explaining your stakeholder persona and the pain they're actually experiencing. And then in terms of the, the two startups that I would pick, I'd say Iron Union was, was very exciting. I think you, that's a big problem that we're going to have to solve. And Experiente Azul, I think there are a lot of parallels with um, what we experienced in Southeast Asia over the last five years. I have done a ton of relationship manager work bench tools for, for banks. They're definitely in need and, and out of the box product like Experiente Azul would be great. And, and that's the reason Expediente Azul is expanding in Southeast Asia and has already started making some big splash there. Thanks a lot, Jose. Uh, now, as I promised to the service providers in the beginning that please don't mess up with the chat section, you'll be given an opportunity to talk about your services. So I'll, 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 I'll follow my uh, promise. So if there is anybody who wants to talk about their services, uh, I'll give you a couple of minutes to do that. Anybody? Sanjay, please go ahead. Hey, not a service provider, but I have an idea for you. You know, as a follow-up, all these all these founders are incredibly busy and have a lot of work to do rather than individual follow-ups with each person. Uh, this was a 90 second or two minute presentation. It'd be good if there's a question that says, are you interested in a one hour follow-up Zoom for each specific company? And then have like a, you know, for each of these companies that presented today, there's a specific Zoom 30 minute or 60 minute or whatever it is for each of them and multiple people can go into that to learn a little bit more. Otherwise, you're all left asking the same questions about you know, fit and uh, all the market you know, viability and competitors and all that good stuff. So, and you know, next step after that could be the real interest uh, phase. I don't know, I think it'll just save these guys a lot of time too. I, no, I love that, I love that idea. Probably having one hour deep dive with the people who really showed the interest uh, so yes. that they don't have to do one-on-one -on -one with each and every person. That's a, that's a great idea, Sanjay. Really awesome, man. That. I want to say thank you to you as well, man. You're doing a great job here. So thank you very much. Uh, thank much appreciated. Thank, thank you, Sanjay. <laughs> you are always very kind, always very kind. Okay. Uh, anybody else? Probably we can take one more feedback. Okay. Again, this is end of the event, but I think we should keep connecting with each other on LinkedIn, on emails. Thanks to the jury for uh, the feedback, for scoring uh, the startups. Thanks to the startup founders for creating these pitches and answering questions. I know this is very difficult to put everything in four minutes of video pitch. Thanks to the audience for your time today. We would love to connect with you in the future. Please uh, try to connect with the startups to figure out the partnership uh, opportunities. It could be investment, it could be you know, co setting the solution, it could be uh, pilots with, with the enterprises and so on and so forth and uh, we'll take it from there. Again, thanks a lot, everybody, for your time, and we'll be soon. Take care, stay safe.